And hello and welcome to this tutorial. Now, you want your photos to look better, and maybe you saw the promo videos for Pixelmator, which looked very good, and so you bought it. And you opened it, and you loaded the photo up. Yes! Now what? What do you do to a photo first or second, or in what order? It's a bit like getting a car and then realizing you haven't had any driving lessons. So, this video is your first driving lesson, and I have more than eight hours of lessons at udemy.com called Pixelmator Solid Foundations at this link, or click the link below. But let's carry on. I'll just mention that fact once or twice as we go through. Okay, let's get started with this photo. Step one of every photo you want to crop and rotate. Now take a look at this. It looks like everyone's walking uphill. The person who took the photo had the camera at a slight angle. It's a very, very common problem. Let's fix it. So on the left-hand side, we have this, our toolbar. We're gonna come down the toolbar to this icon, which is the crop tool. So click on that and come to the top left, click and hold and drag out a rectangle down to the bottom right. Now we do crop and rotate together because you use the same tool for both. So if I take my cursor, I come to just outside of the rectangle. You see how the cursor changes into a little icon with two arrowheads up and down. If I click and hold and I drag up and down, you can see I start to rotate my picture. Also, if you take a look in the middle, you can see I've got little guidelines. It's like two lines going across and two lines going up. I hope you can see them in the video you're watching. Now I'm going to use those to help me to line up. Now I want to try and match up the vertical lines of the shop with the vertical lines inside my cropping and rotating box. Those lines are the rule of thirds lines. That's outside the scope of what we're talking about here. But for now, they're useful for lining up so I get a much more level appearance. Okay, that's worked, but now you can see I need to crop because if you take a look down here, for example, you can see these little light gray and white boxes. That area is transparent. There's no image there. We need to get rid of those. So I'm going to come up to my top right. And you can see when I hover over that little square, my cursor changes to, it's like a little diagonal line with two arrowheads. Now, if I hold down my shift key on my keyboard and I drag down, you can see my crop box is getting smaller. Same if I come down to my bottom left, hover over, hold down my shift key and drag up and in, and you can see my crop box is getting smaller. Now you use crop all the time. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try and get it so that I can see that letter so it's not half in, half out there. And also, my rule of thirds lines, those little lines in the middle, I want to try and get them over the eyes. You want to try and get the important points, the focal points, in most cases, that's the faces and the eyes. You want to get them on one of these rule of thirds lines. So once I've done that, press enter. And there you go, there's my new cropped photograph. I'm gonna to come to my magnifying glass, come to the little gear at the top left, and come to zoom to fit. So that's crop and rotate. That's the first step, one of the five steps that you absolutely must consider doing to every photograph you load up. All right, let's just give you one more example of this. Look, take a look at this picture here. It's a nice enough picture, but the boy's a bit too small in the actual image. So I'm gonna come back to my crop tool. I'm going to, again, click and drag out a rectangular area and I want to make him larger in the picture. So I'll come down to my bottom left, hover over my little square, click the shift button and drag up there. I'm gonna to come to my top right, hold down shift and drag down again. And again, I want his face and his eyes to be on these rule of thirds lines. If I put him in the middle, a bit of a boring composition. If I put it over to one side like that, it becomes just a little bit more interesting. Let's enter and again, come down to my magnifying glass, up to my little gear icon and zoom to fit. Yeah, he's not quite disappearing into the background the way he used to. 
But now, if you take a look at this picture, it's looking very bright. It's looking almost too washed out. Now we need to do something about that, which brings us on to point two of our five step process. And that is getting the dark and light sorted out properly. Now, in order to do this, in case you haven't got it, come up to view and come down to show effects and look at the side. You can see I've got my FX browser. Now we want color adjustments. And what I'm going to use for this, look, you've got things like this. I said it's looking too bright. So we can always come to the brightness slider and then make the brightness darker or lighter. But this is a very crude way of doing things. I recommend don't use this. The one you want to use is the one next to it called levels. And what you do is you click on it, you drag over and you drop onto your actual image. And look, you've got this little dialogue box. Now you see these areas of color here, that's your histogram. That's showing you how many dark and light pixels there are in your picture. At this end, that will be where all the black and very dark pixels are. At this end, that's where the very light pixels are. And as you can see, I've got no black at all in there. I've got no very dark colors in there. So we come to this little button here and we can click and hold and we can slide and watch what happens when I do. You notice the picture is starting to get a little bit darker. The darker areas are getting a bit darker. Same with this slider as well. This is the white slider. If I drag that in a little bit, you'll find the whitest areas are getting a little bit lighter. But my problem with this picture is it's already too light. I'm not going to mess with that. Take a look at this middle slider here. If I move that around as well, you can see the whole picture gets darker or brighter as a whole. Now I can't get silly with this. Look, if I try and move it in too much, look at the child's face. You're getting this rather reddish, unnatural looking effect. With all these controls in Pixelmator, as with any other program, you do extreme things, you're gonna get extreme results. So use your eyes, get the tool to work for you not the other way around. So I'm going to take this back to about here and I'm going to adjust this black just a little bit more. Okay, the dark and light is a lot better. If I just press Command Z for a second, that was before. Command Shift plus Z to redo it. You can see it's looking a lot brighter and the colors are looking at quite a bit more intense as well. That happens when you darken colors, they get more intense. So that's levels, that's getting the dark and light right. There is another one, if I come back to my previous photograph here, there is another control which I like to use within Pixelmator and that is called light and dark. And if I pick that up and I drop it onto my image, you can see I've got two things, light and shadows and dark and highlights. Now in this case, if you take a look at the woman's cardigan, it's looking a little bit blown out. What by that I mean, the light areas haven't got very much detail in there. And in some cases with a camera, you'll get the detail lost altogether. So you come to this slider here, dark and highlights. Watch what happens to the cardigan when I bring this slider down. Can you see how I'm getting much more detail in the highlight areas? That is incredibly useful. And you'll find that feature on high-end programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, I use it all the time. What about light and shadows? Well, that takes the darker areas and brings a little bit more detail into there. But with that, I'm not so concerned about the shadow areas here. I'm more concerned about these blown out highlights. So I'm going to go there, I'm going to click on OK, and I'm just going to make this top layer invisible and show you the original layer. A little bit too light, a lot better definition going on there. Now this tool is very useful because just in case you didn't know, your camera gets it wrong quite often. It can get the overall dark and light wrong so we can use levels, but in particular, it can struggle to cope with highlights, which can be blown out and lacking in detail as we've seen, or the shadows can be too dark and suffering from digital noise. Now why that is and why something called a RAW file can help is something I discuss on the big course over at Udemy, but just be aware for now, that using levels on light and dark can really help your pictures pop. You can get the dark and light right, which is step two of our five step process. Now there's one more tool inside Pixelmator I just want to touch upon, which is possibly the most powerful tool for dark and light corrections. And that is curves. If I drop it on, many professional designers use curves because they say it gives them the most power and the most surgical precision over 
dark and light. Now, I'm not gonna to touch upon it here. I do on the big course over at Udemy, but for now, I'm going to leave it because it's a little bit complicated and a little bit involved. But the advantage of this, as well as getting the dark and light right, you can also use it for something called color correction. And that is step three in our process. So I'm gonna bring over a photograph here. This photo was taken on a sunny day, but being a responsible parent, I put my baby boy in the shade, in a sink. Now the shade was a sheet of orangey yellow material and it cast this yellow light, which I find too strong. And so I want to color correct. So I'm going to use this tool, the color balance tool, and I'm going to drop it onto this image. So what have I got? I've got three tabs here, shadows, midtones, and highlights, and I have three sliders here, cyan, red, magenta, green, yellow, blue. I'm going to use those to try and adjust the color balance. Now, that sink, I know it should be a white sink and it's looking very yellowish, so I'm gonna to come to my highlights first because the sink is a white color, so I want to adjust the highlights. Now it's yellowish, I've got yellow here at this end. So I want to move away from yellow, which means I move towards the blue. Here's my slider. I slide it along to the left and you can see the brighter areas are getting quite a bit brighter. I'm also going to take my cyan, which is also a kind of blue. I'm going to try and move that over a little bit. Now you'll notice when I do that, I get this slight curve going on here. I want either a kind of a straight line or a kind of a curve effect here. If I get these sliders all over the place, I'd get some really weird effect and it's just not working. So I'm going to come here set this to zero and I'm going to try and make this more subtle. It's very easy to overdo these kind of things. All right, I'll go with that. Midtones, I want a very similar thing here. Yeah, that's starting to work. Now shadows, shadows tend to be a little bit cooler than midtones or highlights. But you do find when you adjust the shadows, especially when you adjust from a bright color like yellow towards a dark color like blue, it starts to affect the overall dark and light of the image. So you may have to go back to step two for this. That's up to you, you judge it. But for now, let's take a look at this. If I compare that with the original file, ooh, very yellow. Now it's been color corrected. I've taken an image which was too warm, too yellow, and I've made it cooler. Now I can do the opposite. Take a look at this photograph here. This photograph was taken around midday on a cloudy day. It's looking quite cool. I would like it to be a little bit warmer in general. So I come to my color balance and I drop it on there. Okay, let's take a look, say, highlights. I want them to be just a little bit warmer and a little bit yellower here and a little bit warmer here. Already, I'm starting to get a better result. You don't have to go wild with these. Also, it was in the middle of a wood as well, which had a kind of a greenish light from all the leaves coming from the trees and light bouncing around. So I'm going to try, just for the midtones, try shifting a little bit towards the green end of things. And yeah, those leaves are turning out to be a lot better. I'm getting a more kind of a woodland feel to this. Shadows. I know I made the highlights warmer, but I'm gonna make the shadows a little bit cooler. That's another slight rule of thumb. Shadows cooler, highlights warmer. Let's come back to the highlights and have another look at that. Okay, the effect is quite subtle. I'm gonna go with that. And when you look at it, you think, well, I haven't really done anything, but if I make this layer invisible and show you the original, you can see it's just a little bit cooler. Often when you're doing your photographs, you don't have to make big steps. You don't have to exaggerate. Just do things as subtly as you think is necessary. So new layer again, it's looking a bit warmer and I prefer it. Why are the colors laid out in this seemingly abstract way? Cyan, red, magenta, green, yellow, blue. And why do we have the problems with color balance in the first place? And what if I wanted to leave the picture as it is, apart from the red shirt of the boy because it's bright and distracts a little bit from his face? Well, I explain all that over at the big course at Udemy. I mean, <laughs> there's over eight hours of tuition there, so I have to talk about something. All right, let's cancel this and let's come to step four and that is sharpen. There's this picture. I would like it to be a little bit sharper and in many cases you could do with sharpening up things. It brings out the fine print. So I come back to my effects browser. 
click and hold and come to sharpen now the one I'm going to use is sharpen it's very simple it's very straightforward and look I've got a slider here sharpness 0% if I start to slide it up watch what happens to the stubble and watch what happens to these highlights on the forehead now I hope you can see this on the video that you're watching I don't know what device you're watching on how big the actual video is if I exaggerate this if I take it right to the top oh wow look at that that is a really shall we say stylized effect that's too much I want to take it back down to zero slide it back in there now the reason I'm being quite subtle with this is I want more detail there but you will find sharpen is not very flattering for people's faces that's something to bear in mind but I'll click on okay with that what's actually happening is you're getting an increase in contrast around the edges in the photo if I make this layer invisible and show you the layer underneath look at the stubble let's concentrate on that let's come to 100 percent double clicking the magnifying glass and if I make this layer invisible and show you the original image it's looking softer because there's less contrast around the darker edges of the stubble and the lighter areas of the skin there if I press my spacebar I get this hand and if I click and drag down you can take a look at the highlights and again if I make this layer invisible softer higher contrast what it doesn't do is take a blurred out of focus image and magically make it sharper there are some software companies that say they can do that I'm very dubious about it let's come back to zoom to fit now I've used the sharpen tool it's quite a crude tool by choice I use the unsharp tool which gives you more options to work with it's more advanced but more flexible it's probably also named after the unsharp mask function in Photoshop and that is a point I should make the tools you're using here you'll find their equivalents in Photoshop you have a lot of power on tap with Pixelmator now I can say what most people can't and that is I remember Photoshop version 1 back from around 1990 and what you're getting here comes from around 25 years of experience of using programs like Photoshop and Pixelmator and in the course at udemy.com I bring you that experience and tell you why you do things a particular way and when and when not to use at all but I'm making myself blush and so on to the final step step five of improving your photos and that is corrections now by corrections this includes all the stuff like spot removal teeth whitening clone stamping and removing people that you don't want in the photo yeah you'd love to do that red eye correction and so on now I do cover all this stuff on the main course but there's simply not enough time here so I'll just do a couple of things now the first one is the repair tool if I come to my toolbar come down to this little band-aid thing here this little sticking plaster it's the repair tool click on it and I come to my image actually you know what I will do before I do I'm going to zoom to 100% when you're doing repairs do them at 100% at least and look you can see these little cuts and spots and what have you here if I come to the edge of my image I get this little arrow I can drag out so I get a little bit more screen real estate to see what I'm doing so come to my repair tool whoops come to my repair tool now you can see it's too big at the moment I've got my square bracket keys on my keyboard they're just next to the P it's a standard Apple keyboard so if I press the left square bracket you can see my brush is getting smaller and that's what I want I want my brush to be just bigger than the area I want to affect and now look this is really simple just click and it goes come here a bit smaller click and it goes I'm not going to do that freckle there that I'm not sure if that's a birthmark or a bit of chocolate I'll try getting rid of it I'm using my space bar to get my little hand key and I'm just dragging around I'm not going to do the birthmark there and now I'm going to come to my magnifying glass seem to fit see if there's anything I forgot no there's nothing in particular I forgot although having said that come back to my repair tool okay because my son's a genius he's put his shirt on back to front so if I come and drag around the stitching here and let go it goes 
Cool. Uh, that's magically disappeared. That's magically disappeared, and that's magically disappeared. The repair tool is a very effective tool, but sometimes when you give it too much to do, it falls over, in which case you need the clone stamp tool, which is outside the scope of here. But if I compare this with my original file, spots and cuts, no spots and cuts. Now you'll notice I didn't touch birthmarks, moles, anything like that. Most professional photographers will not take out birthmarks, or moles unless they are specifically asked to do so and the chances are they won't mention it to the client. But for now, the repair tool very easy. There's one more thing I want to touch upon here, which happens all the time, red eye. Go to a magnifying glass, double click to make it full size. And red eye, again, you want to make the actual brush bigger and smaller using the bracket keys and you want to make it fit snugly around the area you want to affect. Once you do, just come to there and Press and click and click and click. How easy is that? Right, come to our layers palette. Knock out this layer to see the layer underneath. Okay, that's the children when they've just had their sugar brush. And after. Very easy. Come back to our magnifying glass. Zoom to fit. And there you go, those are your five steps. Let's go over them again. Okay, make these five steps your checklist when you look at a photo and you're editing and do them in the order we've just done. Step one, crop and rotate. Step two, get the dark and light right. Step three, color balance. Step four, sharpen. And then step five, finally, look at any corrections. And yes, there are reasons for doing them in that order. But there's so much more you can do to enhance your photos and so many more techniques. Selections, adding text, layer blend modes, which is where most photos you see in magazines go through, dodge and burn to lighten and darken parts of an image, and la layer masks. Absolutely vital layer masks. I use them all the time. Now I discuss all these topics and give plenty of real life examples to hammer the principles into place because if you know how to use a tool without knowing why and when to use it, you're not helping yourself. So follow this link on the screen now or click on the link below to check out the Pixelmator Solid Foundations course at udemy.com and get some grade A photo editing knowledge. There's so much more to discuss. I'll see you there.